Hi everybody, it's Micheline from Michelle Makes again with another vlog and uh, yes, same clothes, same earrings, same everything. I just thought I'd continue on. I thought it'd be best to break it up. I'm going to have in the next few weeks a question and answer thing. So if you want to ask me any questions, either by Instagram, by uh, email, down in that, down there is, a, is my email address. Um, at the very bottom where you can add your comments you could put it in there and I will answer questions where I can if you, if I can but uh, in the last one of the last vlogs I showed you was some purses that I made and I hadn't the purse that I made for my daughter which coincidentally she loved she thought was fantastic um, it wasn't uh, waterproof and Kathy Gadd said you could wax it What I wanted to point out was this. We bought a three-piece suite, uh, uh, not a three-piece suite, we bought a tea ones a few years back. And they, uh, they said, did we want to have stain guard on it? And I said, no, no. And it was going to cost us a lot more money to have this stain guard put on. And I just thought, I'm not paying a lot of money for that. So instead, I think they wanted to charge me £100 or more for to stain guard each of the pieces. And so I immediately went home, went on and did a search and I found this Scotch guard. And it was about £10 a, a, a tin. I bought three tins and I only used two of it. And basically you spray, once your tea comes in or your furniture, piece of furniture comes in, you spray it all over and uh, it protects against spills and stains. Protects against spills and stains. Now that might be reversed, but I'll, I'll try and make sure it's right. Protects against spills and stains. And um, so I've used that. I sprayed that on the uh, the furniture, and it's come down, re come out really well. Um, and I still have almost a three quarters. In fact, I've been using this for other things. But this, you just basically on your fabric, either before or after you've made the the, the item, spray it all over, let it dry, and that'll stop it from getting stained it'll stop the water from getting through it um, it protects against spills and stains as I've said before and um, it's quite it's quite handy so um, you could wax it or you could use something like that and as I say a 10 pound bottle like that I think it was about eight or ten pound that will last me probably more purses than I'd ever be able to make but it's also good for coats, you spray your coats and things. Let's see, what does it say you can use it on? Um, it can be used as an invisible barrier and protects leather, suede, new book and fabric from water, greasy stains and oil-based liquids. For example, rain, wine, salad dressing, etc. So it's quite good for keeping that. Uh, keeps fabrics looking new for longer. Fabric looks and feels unaffected and it's easy to clean. The can is sufficient to protect three to five jackets or a three-seater sofa. So that's <coughs> that's probably why I didn't realise a three-seater sofa. Well, mine I used one one tin just for the I think it was a sofa and a footstool that I had. So um, yeah, so that's what I use. Hi everybody, it's Michelle from Michelle Makes again. Um, another vlog. I did say that I'd have the same clothes on but I think you might get a bit of this video with me wearing the previous clothes and a bit of a different one with what I'm wearing now. I'm busy doing a shirt and I wanted to put some buttons on but I wanted pink buttons. But I only have, I don't really want to go out and buy some because like everybody we've got a button box full of buttons and this is a button I fancy using. Not really my first choice but again because I want to use them up I want to use it it will fit the garment because the garment is this color it will fit it because that's what the garment is Oops, on the garment so it's a very fitting kind of color but I'm going to try something because I want I would prefer to make it a pink to match some pink that is a contrast so what I'm going to do is I've raided my nail varnish uh, box. I have lots of nail varnishes, but I've rarely put it on because the minute I put nail varnish on, I peel it off. <laughs> um, 
in one of my jobs my manager used to have uh used to wear like like all you ladies that do it she they used to have absolutely beautifully made nails painted nails and gorgeous you know and glossy and extensions the whole whack and um i i admire them i think they're beautiful but i'm one of these people that the minute i put nail varnish on my nails they start to i, I get them all scratched and even if i put nail hardener on and the top coat the whole lot you can be sure as eggs as eggs i will I will have damaged them and um, my next door neighbour's a, a hairdresser and does uh, nails and, and beauty and stuff and she when it was my son's wedding she said would you like me to do your nails and so she did my nails she put extensions on and she, they were absolutely beautiful absolutely fantastic but could I oh by I think the wedding the wedding was on the Saturday by Monday I was, I was biting it off <laughs> I just couldn't stand the fact that when I was touching things it wasn't my the end of my proper fingernails that was touching things and I just had to get them off um, there are those who can cope with that and those who can't but sadly I'm not so anyway that, again I digress I happen to have some pink nail varnish now I have in times gone by when I've had buttons and I'll show you what I do I've got a button box that's full of buttons uh, and there were things like this, buttons like this, that um, these ones are equivalent, about the same age, 30 odd years old, perhaps not these two but definitely these. Uh, I made, these went onto my son's trousers and he was, when he was four, he's now 40. So it just shows you how old they are. And um, these were exactly the same and these have been banging around in my uh, button box for that number of years this is one of my old button boxes and uh, it's more than 30 years old with lots of buttons that I've accumulated over the years which to be honest they're not the kind of buttons that I would be wearing quite a lot of them they're all right there's nothing wrong with them that and that nothing wrong with them that one nothing wrong but I'm not keen on the color I've got nothing that I want that would match it but 30 years ago I was I would the same thing happened and so I shall pull these away and show you what I did. So this is basically the remnants of the buttons that I've got left. I originally did about, I would say about 50 or 60 and I used them on garment just to brighten the garment up. Um, basically I took a button, an ordinary button, in fact I would match them up and as you can see those were white, that one was a blacky brown and you can see the gold still on it. These were sprayed on the top but they're actually like a goldy colour on the back but they weren't very nice gold so I figured it would be nicer with more gold sprayed on. These ones were a brownie colour. I was never ever going to use that colour. So what I did was I took about 50 of them, put them out on a piece of newspaper, took them out in the garden and got some gold spray and sprayed them and it was basically like that I sprayed them and these buttons have been knocking around in that button box for that number of years and they haven't lost their gold so um, it's just one way of using up an oddment of buttons that probably would never get used otherwise so basically I have a, a problem well not a problem I have some buttons that I want to change um, what I'm going to do is try and change the colour of that and I'm, rather than spray it I'm going to try some nail varnish and the nail varnish is what, whose make is it? Mavala and Mavala are apparently very good for having uh, chip proof paint nail varnish and nail varnish is really just like a, a bit like a form of paint so I'm going to try it on that and if it works then I'm, I'm in luck so let's see what happens so in in this case these ones have a shank on the back and I don't want to get my fingers on them I don't want to get covered so I've got a cocktail stick and I'm going to hold the cocktail stick while I paint them and that's going to be like that and I quite like that I might not even put a second coat on because it looks like it might be a bit uh, add a little bit of silver to it it's quite nice that now what I could do is I could wipe some of it off just let's have a look and see if we can wipe it off and see what it does I've shaken the bottle and here we go a 
let's see what happens. Oh, I've got a little piece of stuff on there. Pull, pull that off a little hair. Right, so here we go. And it's going to get into all the holes, which I don't mind. Um, I don't know if you can see it from there. You can see what's going on. If it doesn't take straight away, I think I might need to put a second coat on, but let's see what happens. Oh, hold that from the back with my finger. With this and see what happens. So it's basically, oh that might actually be better. Basically, I'm wiping it off. So I've still got the silver but it's got a bit of the pink in it. I think that's going to be quite nice. So, we'll make some more, we'll do more with them. So there you go, I'll see if I can zoom in. It might just lose its colour after a while. But there are 10 buttons that I've coloured pink and I think that might look quite nice against the, uh, the grey now. Uh, as I say, I would have preferred a fuchsia pink type of uh, colour, but they're not too bad. Uh, we're going to let them dry. They're still a little bit damp. I just had enough left in my little pot of paint of, of nail varnish, uh, so I'm quite pleased with that. I can now dispose of a pot of nail varnish that's, uh, that's been lying around doing nothing. There you go. And those will go on to the garment that I'm busy making. Oh, they're not the way, so they're not knocking each other. Oops. So there you go. Those are my pink buttons. It looks more through the um, the uh, here. It looks more silvery than pink, but in the flesh they are looking pink, which is quite good. I'm pleased with that. I have about four dressing gowns. I don't wear dressing gowns very often. Uh, when I get up on the morning, I tend to get up in my pajamas and then quickly change. I'm not one for wandering around the house in a dressing gown. I like to wear clothes. And so last January, I bought this dressing gown. It was in a sale. And the reason why I bought it was two, two reasons. A, it was cheap. By English stands, it cost five pounds. And B, it was the fluffiest, fluffiest. It had a, such a lovely feel to it that uh, I thought, oh, I've got to have it. And C, it was in leopard skin. Now, I'm not a leopard skin person, but those of you who watch Coronation Street, we used to all like Bet Lynch who wore leopard skin. And I'm sure there must have been some time in our lives where we thought, oh, we'd love to be like Bet Lynch. <laughs> So, I do like leopard skin actually, but uh, this leopard skin dressing gown, I bought it and I never ever wore it. So I thought, right, I was looking at it the other day and I was going to put it in a charity bag. And it, it was my stepdaughter came to the house one day and uh, she said, oh, that dressing gown you got is really lovely and soft, it's gorgeous, it's gorgeous. And I said, well, I'm debating whether to put it in the, in the, um, in the charity bag or whether I should do something with it. And then I thought about it and I decided I'd do something with it. It was one of these, it was one of these wrap over dressing gowns that has a tie belt and uh, you wrap it round you. And I, I think that's probably why I don't wear dressing gowns because they tend to burst open with, or you know, the, the tie you can never get, I'm constantly trying to tie it and then it works loose. So what I did was I sewed um, let me just draw, do a drawing to show you what I did. Right, well that's what it looked like. Well it didn't look like that, it looked, this is my, this is my rendition of what it looked like. So what I did was, I took the front bit and I'll show you the side view. It's not very good but that's a side view. And what I did was I sewed down, I don't know if you can see, but I sewed down where the dotted lines are. I sewed down there and um, this is the neck so I've taken if you take it sideways and you hold the collar bit out I took a quite quite a about four or five inches off the collar and then tapered it down till it was actually down to about an inch or an inch and a half at the bottom and then so that when 
I'd done that so that when I finished, it had a bit of a high colour, the dressing gown looked a bit like this. A bit of a rough cut drawing, I don't know if you can see very well, but uh, that's what it looked like. And I thought this is fantastic because I can wear it around the house and we've, winter is pretty cold here and sometimes if I'm sitting in the house after a while I do get cold and you do when you get older you start to get cold. So the nice thing about that is it's no longer a dressing gown, it's a kind of throw that I can throw over myself when I'm cold on, over my clothes, you know, if I'm sitting there and it's usually my legs that get cold and so I can throw this over and it's lovely and snuggly and cosy. So I'll put a video up to show you what it looked like when it was done. I was very pleased with it. I thought you might like to see this is a top that I made. Um, it's actually a self-drafted one taken from a t-shirt I bought from a supermarket. I basically tra traced around it and uh, this top that I had, the top that I was bought, it had some folds here, some little, it was actually originally in Jersey and it had folds in it. So I actually traced around the pattern and on the sh front shoulder seam I put splits in and then I opened it out and put pieces of paper in amongst the splits just to, um, just to spread that, this one shoulder seam out. and then pleated the pleats up as you can see pleated the pleats up two little pleats and joined it together i'll put a picture up of the pattern that i did on the side i um it didn't have the original one didn't have splits in but i put splits in because i thought it was quite nice and also you can put your hand in your pocket and uh, i do i think it's lovely uh, it works well let's see so this was, this is um, just a little something I put together, I think I put it together about August or September and I still have more fabric left so I'll make something else out of it. Now then, I wanted to show you this because I bought this last year and it was a furry, furry dressing gown, uh, lovely and soft, gorgeous and soft, but I, it's one of those, it was one of those that you wrap around and tie the belt and Every time I put it on, I felt like a big frumpy person and I didn't feel, I don't like wrap around dressing gowns where you've got to tie it because they always burst open when you're big busted. And so I did something to it. And I'm quite pleased with it because what it did was, I took the front of the dressing gown and I sewed all the way down it, put the, put the wrong size together and sewed all the way, way down and basically ended up cutting off about four inches at the top down to about an inch at the bottom. So basically it's now all one, it's all in one piece and I'll show you what I like about it. So this is the uh, dressing gown and uh, as you can see it's sewn all the way down the front. I've got a little bit of a hood there, a little bit of a, a collar type thing there which I can woo, snuggle into. I've got pockets, it's um, it's not bad I, and, I, and I would wear this more around the house, get out the bath, put it on, keep you nice and warm, um, especially in English weather and I just think it's more practical for me. So gone are the wrap around dressing gown to the tie and you can do whatever you like, you're not having to keep tightening yourself up. So I thought it was a good bargain, I bought it in the sale for £5, I liked it not so much because of the leopard, well, you know, a Bet Lynch type leopard skin thing. Is, is, haven't we always wanted to look a bit like that years ago, ladies? Um, but anyway, the reason why I bought it was because it was gorgeously soft. And I wasn't wearing it. And I thought that um, perhaps, you know, doing this might make me wear it more. And I can promise you that when I come in from work and it's cold and I, I just put this on, uh, we have the heat. Uh, the whole house is heated up but uh, there are times where I just feel a bit of a chill and I can just I just have this so that I can quickly whisk it on and so I'm very pleased with it so that's my next make and the other thing is if you if you go around the sales at the moment we have lots of sales in the supermarkets for clothes we have sales in other places if you 
go around and look in the sales don't just look for your size look for a bigger size because sometimes they have a lot of stock in the bigger sizes and you can actually use that fabric uh, for to make something else with it so you may be able to, if you're a size 14 and you see a garment that is a size 22 you could cut the fabric up and you've got the fabric enough fabric to make yourself a size 14 dress and you may only have paid five pound for the material so that's another good way to save money with that and i did that the other day the trouble is every time i buy something and i think oh i could cut that up i could do something with that i always end up looking at it and thinking well i could wear that myself i like a baggy top <laughs> so um so i haven't not very often have i managed to get uh, get get to cutting it up except for the one where I did the palazzo pants you may remember the video where I did the palazzo pants I'll put a thing up there to link you to it the palazzo pants was made from a dress I think it was actually a size 14 dress and I'm a size 16 to 18 now the other thing is remember this my camouflage material that I made a top out of well I was not happy with that camouflage material the other day I was tidying up my fabric and um, I came across the camouflage fabric that I got which was really cheap and I was thinking I don't like this I really don't like this so the yesterday or the day before yesterday it was I decided to dye the fabric and I dyed the dress and I dyed some other material that was a pale grey that I knew I was never going to wear and the and now I dyed them purple and this is what they've turned out like. What? What are you wearing? What's that you got on? Have you changed it? It looks like you've dyed it. I like it. I do. So cute. So that I will wear because it's purple it doesn't look as pinky I'm not a pinky person it doesn't look as pinky as the other one so I'm quite pleased with that and uh, I was debating whether I'm, I'm being very ruthless and I was thinking right if I'm not liking it put it in put it in the charity bag and so um, I hummed and hard over putting it in the charity bag but ha yesterday I happened to be going out with my husband who uh, it was like a big called a shop called the range which covers crafty stuff and you name it they sell it and um we went there we had a little coffee and a cake and uh, we wandered around and i came across some dye and i thought whoa i think i might try dyeing that fabric so because that's something i do quite a lot of I, i'm constantly dyeing fabric constantly so anyway i decided i might dye buy some dye so I, they ha they had dye and i bought some and it's machine dye now i have dyed clothes all my life well not all my life but i've dyed clothes since i was about oh i must tell you the story i've dyed clothes since i was in my 20s and when i was in my 20s I think it was my sister that got us got me onto it. We used to dye our shoes. We'd buy shoes and then we used to buy shoe dye. And she always did things and I'd just copy it. And she decided to dye. She bought a pair of white shoes because white shoes were the fashion. And then we went off them. So she dyed them black and bought the shoe dye. Or she'd buy other pretty, pretty you could buy all sorts of colours of shoe dye and we used to dye them then we used to dye clothes and in those days the only way you could dye clothes was in a pan a pan with boiling water and you had to put the boiling water in put the a little it was a tiny little tin dial on tin of powder a dye powder and you tipped the t they shook it in you pierced it and if you didn't get it all over your hands you were lucky and then you shook it in and and um you uh you you left it to, to dissolve and then you put your your clothes in and let you you kept tossing the clothes around so that it didn't, it didn't you got an even dye all over your fabric and then after a certain length of time you took them out and you rinsed them and it was all done by hand 
and I was constantly constantly dying things I still do I still I, if something if something doesn't appeal to me I'll think oh well let me try dying it first and if that doesn't work it'll go in the charity bag um, so anyway I uh, I used to die die quite a lot and this particular time I just got married and uh, to my first husband and I was dying something pink I think it was and in order to rinse it I put it into the washing machine to rinse it but I forgot to clean the washing machine out didn't I and my husband played cricket and um, guess what happened <laughs> happened uh, after I put the this thing into the washing machine to rinse it obviously in those days it didn't rinse all the dye out did it so that when I put my husband's white cricket gear in into the washing machine it came out pink and I was devastated I thought what the heck am I gonna do because he played cricket regularly and he was quite a good cricket player anyway he used to play county cricket and I was thinking oh my god what am I gonna do so I, I think I, I ended up putting in bleach to try and get the white off but I th it, in one way it was terrible but in another way it was kind of a whew, blessing because when his mother heard about it when I told his mother she said right I'm washing his clothes for his, his cricket whites from now on I don't want my son going out with pink cricket whites and I thought whoa that's great you can you can wash them as long as you want <laughs> but then a few uh, a few months later I was dying something else it must have been red or something I was dying because I never dyed pink it was always red but one day I was I'd used this pan to dye with and um, it was a, one of these non-stick pans that's got a black coating in it and of course when I finished doing everything I thoroughly washed the pan I can assure you I did thoroughly wash this pan and then an old aunt came to visit and she was going to stay for tea so we asked well, I was making the tea and I thought right I'll do potatoes I'll do we'll mash some potatoes boil the potatoes in the pan and mash them and um, I was absolutely gobsmacked when the potatoes started turning pink and I ended up with pink mashed potatoes and I thought I didn't have anything else to give her and where we lived was too far away from a corner shop to go and get some so I had to serve her these pink, <laughs> pink potatoes <laughs> they were pink potatoes and I was convinced <laughs> convinced her that I'd put cochineal in it <laughs> God. and she was she was in her 80s bless her oh god I must I'll have to repeat this because I'm <laughs> she was um she was in her 80s and um and she didn't eat much of the potatoes and I really can't blame her bless her oh I was so embarrassed I could after that I vowed never again I'm gonna have a dying pan that I use simply for dying and I do not use it for anything else um and so god I probably could have poisoned her as well you know I mean I never thought about that but I could have poisoned the poor woman but oh god it was that was awful uh, anyway so <laughs> oh heavens above uh, memories what memories god anyway I decided to dye this and so I bought this purple dye and it's really good I'll show you what it looks like as you know I'm mainly a black person and so this is this is one that I haven't used yet but it's called Dylon Intense Black and it comes in a little plastic container in, that's a little plastic container this is the English version. I don't know what the Americans have. Peel it off, uh, peel the top off, and it exposes the the part of the dye powder. You don't need to add salt, and, or because the salt is the fixative that stops the dye from um, from um, bleeding. And so this is this is what you know. You just put the whole lot. I put the put the clothes into the washing machine, put that in, and set it away uh, once you've wrapped, unwrapped everything and uh, it goes through the full wash and everything comes out dyed and um, it's, it turns out really good and um, can you hear her? Um, it turns out 
I've never had any problems with it and basically what I tend to do is I don't need to rinse the uh, machine it rinses it all anyway but what I do is sometimes put some dark coloreds into the into the washing machine afterwards to wash them doesn't make any difference they don't come out stained or marked or anything and uh, so this is what I've used this is what I used it on um, I'll, sh I'll show you what I use it on and um, this is what it's turned out like this is the um, this is the what the pink camouflage and I quite like that color now basically the black stayed the same the gray has gone a little bit darker that pink has gone I can't remember what the color scheme was now but that was a pink but I think this was white and that's gone more into a purpley color and that's gone a deeper that was more of a light pink this has gone darker and so it, you know it, I just think the color scheme is far better so that's one and the other one that I had was this this was uh, a pale very pale gray fabric uh, it's actually snowflakes like uh, little snowflakes on them and it's because it was gray you could tell it was snowflakes but I thought oh, that means I've got to use it for something for Christmas but I figured that if I dyed it purple it would be less noticeable as being snowflakes or it would be more acceptable let's say and I thought I could make a shirt or something out of that. I've got enough fabric to make a shirt. And it's like a very, I don't know if you can see, it's a very soft cotton. And that has turned out really well. It, and the nice thing about going in the washing machine is you don't end up with patches. It, it's all very smooth. It goes, it goes on nicely. I'm going to stop there. And I think tomorrow I shall give you, do another video. It's, it's late Saturday night. It's 10 o'clock. So... Until we meet again, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next time. Bye.